It's a summer day in Austin as students at the University of Texas stroll the campus. A day much like the one 50 years ago, long before anyone knew the term mass shooting. This is where you yeah, were lying. Yeah. And it's the day and the spot Claire Wilson James will never forget. So as you lay here, you can see the tower oh, yeah. right over you. That day was August 1st, 1966. Walter Cronkite anchored a special CBS News report. A deranged engineering student at the University of Texas climbed to an Austin landmark at noon today. A man perched atop the University of Texas clock tower began firing on the people below. Victims were cut down on the west and south sides of the campus as the sniper zeroed in on his targets with unerring accuracy. He shot at random for more than 90 minutes. Claire, an 18-year-old student, eight months pregnant, was walking on campus with her boyfriend, Tom Ekman. At first, she didn't know what was happening. So you never heard the shot? No, I never heard a shot. I just felt like I was a big jolt, and then I started falling. As she fell to the pavement, her boyfriend, Tom, turned to ask her what was wrong. The next thing she knew, he was lying dead next to her, and she couldn't move. You thought you were dead. I thought I, I was going to die, yeah. The killer was 25-year-old Charles Joseph Whitman, a former Marine sharpshooter. Unknown to anyone, he had already killed his wife and mother in their homes before heading to the tower's 28th floor observation deck with multiple guns. It was the first school mass shooting in modern U.S. history. He affected so many lives in that one day. Retired Texas Ranger Ray Martinez was a young officer with the Austin Police Department at the time. Arriving on campus, he couldn't believe what he saw. When I got out of the car, I could hear all of this shooting going on. It was all like a war. Back then, there was no such thing as rapid response teams. It was left to Martinez and a civilian, followed by a fellow officer, Houston McCoy, to climb to the top of the tower to face off against the sniper and his arsenal. As Martinez described it at the time. He, when he was swinging it, he didn't have it uh, leveled at me. He was trying to bring it down, and I just kept firing. And I could tell by impact, you know, that I hit him. And I kept advancing, shooting. McCoy shot and hit him. And uh, he started going down. The shooter was dead. He killed 16 people that day and injured dozens more. The mass shooting brought fundamental changes to police departments and led to the creation of SWAT teams used around the country. For decades at UT, the only reminder of that terrible day could be found on this rock. Keith Maitland, who went to school there, wondered why he never heard more. This is a story I think that anybody who grew up here has heard a little bit about. But if you want to get past just that little bit, there isn't really a lot out there to kind of fill in the blanks. So he made a documentary called Tower. It uses animation and archival footage to tell the story of that day. The shot that hit me bypassed me and ricocheted off the building. Everybody just in the sudden panic. Then what happened? And everybody ran. What I wanted to understand is what was it like to live through something like this and how would it impact you and how does it impact a community? The worst days of your lives are... In the process, he wound up reconnecting people who, as it turned out, had not seen each other since that day 50 years ago. People like Claire Wilson James... Hi, Claire. Hello, baby. ...and Artley Snuff. Snuff was just a teenager at the time. That's him on the right in the dark shirt, running out in full view of the sniper to pick Claire up and carry her some 100 yards down the steps to safety, something he says he simply felt he had to do. 
because she was shot. And she was obviously pregnant. It was the most horrific day of my life. To this day? Oh, gosh, yes. I didn't go to war. That was my war. Because why? The blood, the death, the horror, the... Uh, um, the loss of innocence. I think what I probably learned the most is that you have to deal with trauma. Um, and for people who, who didn't give themselves an opportunity or weren't given an opportunity, it really sits with them and, and kind of eats away at them over the course of the rest of their lives. And he had... Even people you might not expect, like Ray Martinez, who, before he was a police officer, was a combat medic. He told us on his way to the tower to stop the sniper that day, he was forced to run past Claire as she lay bleeding on the quad without stopping to help her. That day, I was thinking like a medic, but I was also thinking like a policeman. I saw her wounded and I felt like it was my duty to grab her and take her out of there. In the movie version of this, you're the guy that shoots the sniper and saves the day, and you're telling me that even you are racked by guilt? Well, if you're a human being and you got feelings for people, yes. The university is now taking steps to remember those lost. This past week, a new, larger memorial was dedicated, listing the names of those killed, including Claire Wilson James's boyfriend and also her unborn baby. And in the shadow of the tower, there is now friendship and healing for survivors. And from Claire, something else. And you forgive him. Oh, yeah, how could... God's forgiven me everything I've done, and he's kept me from being that kind of person, you know, that decided to go that way. I mean, how could I not forgive him? I mean, he's, he was just a really mixed-up kid.